Hello and welcome to another update on the Age of Sail project that I've started using uh, Langston's uh, miniatures for the uh, Napoleonic uh, period. Um, uh, last time you remember that I did the unboxing of these uh, miniatures from Langton's which I was really impressed with um, and you know I showed you the various uh, ships etc that you can get from this company which are absolutely awesome lovely little detail things um, and I spoke about the sails on the ship now since then I've changed my mind I know it's a terrible thing to do and I've gone from the white sails to the brass sails and the reason I did that I don't know if you remember I said that you could get these on, on eBay the ship that I purchased on eBay came through with brass sails so I, I tankered about with it tankered I tinkered about with it and um, I preferred the brass sails to the white sails the reason being I like modeling and I like uh, painting and and doing that that side of the hobby so for me it wasn't a great uh, deal I, I was terrified of them I thought you know these things are going to be very difficult uh, so the reason I changed to the brass sails is because they weren't as bad as I thought um, they were much easier than I thought and I think the effect you get so I'll show you the ship in a minute is better um, if you're a straight war gamer and you're not that interested in the modeling side of stuff the white cells are absolutely perfect there's nothing wrong with them at all but when I got hold of the brass cells I thought you know I can add a little bit of flair to them and play around with them so I contacted Carol poor Carol at Langton's and she swapped all my sales back to brass sales for me um, uh, for no extra charge which was really really sweet of them so I was really pleased with that so I have gone to the brass sales um, I will do a video on putting these things on uh, when you start with the brass sales they do come uh, with the masts without the sails on the, the metal ones do as well because you put those on uh, put them in a piece of balsa and you attach the sails accordingly but I'll, I'll, I'll talk through all that they're, they're really it's really not a major problem to do um, but you have to understand it is a modeling uh, sort of requirement to do those um, but yes yeah, so that's the only update as far as the sails go I've set myself on the brass sails now and I won't be changing back but if you are a war gamer and you're not that much into the modeling side of stuff like I am the white metal sails are absolutely perfect so that's that aside for now um, the other update I want to do is on the rules I've gone through the rules now um, I've had a really good look at them and I am mega impressed with them I think they're absolutely superb I'm slightly um, I don't know, slightly sort of in wonderment as to why people would think they're super complicated. I haven't found them super complicated and I'm by no means super intelligent or anything. Um, but there's some great things in here, some great nuances. For instance, uh, whereas a lot of rules you're the omnipotent god, in other words you control the guns, the sails, the ship, you know, everything. And it all works perfectly and it's just uh, sorted out on a, on a die roll. In this, you write the orders, you say, okay, my ship's going to sail forward turn to the left uh, and open fire and then you announce with the other player what you're doing then you roll some ability dice now depending on the ability of your ship and any other factors you, you may put in your own scenarios you, you can put things in like the captain could be a drunkard or whatever you can add all that yourself um, you roll on the ability table and the ship may not do what you want it to do so you're on the bridge and you shout out you know hard to pour forward fire at the frigate or whatever you roll on the ability table, you may turn hard to port, you may go forward, then when you fire, one of your own guns may explode, and you may completely miss the enemy. That is brilliant. Now, I must stress that these are extreme examples because the factors for this happening are, you know, quite extreme. But they're, they're the mid-range of factors, everything's going to go swimmingly, but it's in there. It's in there that these things are built in that can go wrong. For instance, you can lose the wind. Uh, your ship can forget to turn, or not forget to turn, but fail to turn. Um, you know, you could do a, an amazing fire. You could open fire and fire far better than you've ever, ever fired before and do more damage and, and explode a cannon on the enemy ship. But they are extremes end of the chance factor. And I really like that because that kind of thing did happen in combat. Um, yeah, these rules are really good. They're so good, in fact. This is the fast play. They're so good, in fact. I'm going to order the full set. Uh, so me and Andy, when we play, we can do some in-depth uh, gaming, perhaps on the smaller... With, a, with some uh, less vessels um, but if we're going to do a club night these are absolutely superb these are the five play edition very impressed with the rules 
So um, the next time I do a video, hopefully you'll see us using them and then we can give a good uh, review on what they're like. Um, so, the I left you last time with me about to you know build a ship and I have done one. Um, it's the Furiosi, uh, Furious or whatever it's called in French. I think it means furious, so I'm not completely convinced of that. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, I put the ship together. Now, I made many mistakes doing this. Um, I built it in the wrong order. I painted it in the wrong order. I had to take it apart again and redo things. And I've learned such a lot that I will do a video on uh, the best way to build and paint a uh, Asia Sail ship. Uh, and that's simply because when you're building these things, put the mast separate on a piece of bolster, or something like this. Um, you know, you put the three masts on there, you paint them separate. When they're painted, stick them in the hole. Uh, then you can add the, the black lines to it. Uh, then you can add the, the rat tails, which are the, the things that go up the sides. Then you can add the, the more lighter um, cable, uh, ropes, the, one, the ropes they use for moving the sails, and so on and so on. So there is a, a proper progression in building one of these ships. Everything else in Wargame, or most other things in Wargame, you just put together on paint. But this you really do need to do in order, otherwise you keep going back over yourself. Um, but mega impressed with the model. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, the base, I have um, added a, a plastic uh, base to the bottom, 0.5mm. Um, and in that I've put three deoderm magnets, you know the earth magnets you get on eBay, the little ones. Because what I'm going to do with these, I was going to use a, a foam box for storing the ships, but obviously getting them in and out of the slots in there, you're going to be damaging the shells and catching the rigging. So I saw somewhere on a blog where someone had uh, put, put them on a metal plate in a wooden box, and I thought, great, you know, toolbox, anything like that, it's going to have a, a metal plate where it just fits straight onto. Um, and then that is going to save me from damaging it. Um, the base is slightly thicker now. Uh, the base is like, you know, uh, half a centimetre or some, some, about five mil. And now you can pick it up with two fingers, you can move the model. No one's going to touch the sails or the rigging because, you know, if I'm down the club and someone's picking my ships up by the rigging, the, you know, I'm going to go mental. So, uh, <laughs> especially after you've painted and rigged one of these things. Um, it took quite a while to do this uh, because I was backwards and forwards and stopping and starting and redoing myself and deciding on how much level of detail I wanted to do. I mean you don't have to put any rigging on it at all, you don't have to have rack lines, you know, there the really is the basic ship up to the full rig. This is probably three quarters rigged. Um, a full rigged ship for me is going to look a little bit too much, look a little bit like a spider's web. Um, so this is about three quarters rigged which gives me all the detail I want, the contrast that I like. Um, so yeah, very very impressed with it. Um, I've put the name on the back with the nationality and how many guns it has and the reason I've done that is because when I'm playing the game it's just easier for instant reference to see what it is and also I think it looks quite nice having the name on the back you've got a line of them coming up you know who's who what's damaged and all, all the rest of it and how many guns it's got um, so yeah there you go so I'll just get some closer shots of this for you uh, the Furiosi I hope it's called Furious in French otherwise I'll probably find out it's called Cake or something but um, I think it's called the Furious, so let me just get my fingers in the right place for this. So there you go, this is, just hold the camera, this is the Furious, 40 gun Seine class frigate. Um, they built four of these Seine class frigates, they're lovely models that, that, that Rod's done, uh, they really are, really are excellent. Um, but they built four of them, they're all eventually captured by the British as well as most ships were. This one uh, was launched in 1794 or 1795 and wasn't captured until 1809, so it had a bit of a career. Sailed around the Caribbean, did a couple of little missions and stuff, so um, it was, I've done it in the red. I've done the, I remember I was saying about the colours of the red. Um, again, this was a, a, a captain's uh, choice what his ships were early on, 1790s up to 1805. It really was down to the captain most of the time. Uh, what colour he painted the ship and often when these were recaptured they weren't repainted because obviously if the captain didn't have a lot of money he wouldn't be able to afford it so um, they would often uh, remain in the colours that they were previously um, but this is a French ship in red and obviously like I said before people think that you know the red Spanish and stuff like that it's not at all there was English ships that were red there was some green there was some like a few a few blue uh, there was obviously the yellow so you know the, the, this wasn't hard and fast rule that each nation had its own colours 
so um, yeah this one's in the red uh, the flags are pretty correct you've got the small small flag on top the flag on the back which is actually on the rigging line I don't know if that's picking it up on the camera I think it is that's where that was kept obviously the flags go in the direction of the wind which obviously um, you know when you when you're doing one you think the flag's going to be flying that way it's not it's going to be blowing in the direction of the wind which is probably something to get my fingers right something to remember um, yeah the sea base has come out really nice I'm really pleased with that uh, it's not a bad little effect on there you got the little boat on the back there if you're wondering what that is uh, because the ship is at quarters which means the the guns are all rolled out ready for action and the bottom uh, sails are furled this is uh, easy sail courses furled this course is here uh, the men can run around the deck and to clear the deck uh, so they could operate properly they would often put the ships over the side uh, the ships the boats over the side and, and tow them into battle so you get the big first second rates third rates you know sometimes I have two or three boats in a line there and I've decided to sort of do that on mine just to add a little bit of detail um, I think it makes it look quite neat and tidy um, just to explain the rigging a little bit the inside uh, ropes going up the masts there are the rat lines um, that's where the men would run up and down and change various mast settings um, I've put them on slightly wrong on this model like I say I'm learning as I go they should go to the bottom uh, I don't know what these little decks are called on the mast I can't remember what they're called but they should run up underneath each one um, I've done it right on one side but not on the other I've just got them on the outside but you can't really tell at this scale so I'm not going to try and change it on this model now um, so they're the rat lines the black um, the black rigging is the, the the fixed rigging that's the rigging that holds the masts and things in place uh, and it's permanent and they would they were tarred so that's why they're black and then the light colored rigging is the um, the movable rigging the, the rigging they would use and that would help sort of alter the yards and raise the sails up and down etc uh, they would have those on the on this middle part up here as well um, I've only done them on the bottom because that for me is enough um, I did rig it fully and I thought it just looked a little bit too much it looked a little bit like a, a cobweb or spider's web uh, that gives what I've done I think gives enough detail and makes it look nice and uh, you know nice and efficient I'll try and get a little bit closer shots of the ship for you there lots of detail on these little ships you can paint as much or as little as you like obviously um, and just really enjoy doing it really I mean it was a great little model to paint and the good thing about this kind of wargaming is of course you don't need lots of models you don't need to paint like you know 20 Carassiers and like you know 40 infantry and all the rest of it you build two or three models you can start playing um, and these things are just you know they're they're real collector's items they're absolutely gorgeous so like I say I put the name on the back so that it's got the, the, how many guns it's got which is 40 in this case uh, the name Furious or Furious perhaps hopefully and the nationality uh, let's try and focus get that to focus on the rear little windows there but now really really pleased with it so hopefully uh, this will inspire you to uh, grab a couple of these models from Langton's while you can and uh, you know knock them together and maybe get into this art of Napoleonic naval warfare. Talking of which, if you're going to do that, there's another little tip for you which I think really helps with painting all these kind of models and that is this, Alexa, continue. How amazing and brilliant is that? You can actually get music on your Alexa or on your stereo or whatever. Alexa, stop and have it play in the background while you're painting. For me, I have every period that I do, World War II, um, uh, futuristic stuff, uh, Napoleon Naval, anything that I do, um, Lord of the Rings, I have the music in the background when I'm painting. It just puts a little bit of... Uh, of that feeling in there so but well, there you go there's the ship the first one the furious the 40 gun frigate um i will give you an update give me a few weeks now i'm gonna try and crack on with maybe a squadron at a time um i think it'd be easier with the the paints and swapping stuff um so yeah next time you see me we should have a couple of ships painted and we should be fighting a naval battle in the uh, in the age of sail um so yeah brilliant so remember if you like it, subscribe and um, put your comments, uh, questions in the comments. And um, yeah, great. Can't wait to see you next time. A few weeks' time, we'll have a, another little frigate, maybe a British one or a couple of little ships. And uh, me and Andy are going to start bashing each other on the old tabletop. So 
there you go and I will I will try and do um, a video on how to put these things together because like I say it, it's a set formula and like anything in life um, once you've learnt the correct way to do it it just makes everything easier so good hope you enjoyed the video see you next time